So now let's look at our first circuit, our first AC circuit, the AC driven resistor. We could draw it like this. We have a new thing, um, an AC power supply. So a battery applied a set uh, potential difference, uh, a constant potential difference between two points in a circuit. This just applies an oscillating potential difference between two points in a circuit. We might describe it like this, delta V, where the little script V means it's a function of time, is delta V max, the constant amplitude, times the sine of omega t, some oscillation. That might be what's coming out of this power supply. And then it goes up and to a resistor. So the resistor is simply being driven by an AC power supply, which is exactly what we have here. So here we have uh, the wall is applying an oscillating delta V at about 60 hertz, 115 volts, to the nichrome wire, which is just a resistor. Currents flowing back and forth, voltages flowing, or is oscillating back and forth, the potential difference. Okay, so let's think, how do we describe that? Well, the power supply applies this delta V. There's some voltage drop across the resistor. Together those are equal. They're equal to zero, their sum's equal to zero. So we know that then the little delta V that's oscillating time equals IR, so the current must also oscillate in time because the resistor is constant. So we can then say I is the oscillating delta V over R, and we could then write it out, well, this is delta V, so it's delta V max, the amplitude over the constant R sine omega t. Okay? So we get the simple result for this circuit that I, the current, oscillates in phase with the little delta V. So that's really the result we're looking for. The potential that's applied is oscillating at sine omega t. The current, since they're proportional, comes out to the same thing, sine omega t. So if we were to plot the applied delta V coming out of the power supply uh, like this, and then we were to plot on top of it, on this axis, I, they would be right on top of each other. Both sinusoids. Okay. Now, we could also think of this as in terms of the RMS. Right? So maybe uh, thinking about the power is a good way to start. So we know that power, uh, power let's think about the average power. The, the real power being generated is fluctuating. Let's go straight ahead and think about the average power. But well, we know that power is um, I squared R. We know that. So it would be the uh, squared R. It would be kind of that average for those two things. Right? Well, we know that the resistance is constant, so that would come out. It's surely the average of little I squared, of this oscillating I squared. Well, we know that's really some big I max sine omega t. So you could write that as um, I max squared sine omega t squared but the average of that is a half, so you could put a half in front of here, and then the r is still there. Oops. The average of r is just r. So hopefully you can see what we did there. I max is this thing right here. We squared that. We squared sine omega t. That's where the half comes from. So p average is that, but then if you look, you see this is 1 over the square root of 2 times I max times 1 over the square root of 2 times I max. That's the RMS. Right? So we get that p average is I R M S squared times R. The square root of that uh, is that this is two I R M S's times each other if you go from I max to I R M S. So you can see this is a case where we do averages and R M S's, it looks like the DC equation. P is I squared R. You can do the same thing for P equals V squared over R. So that's why those R M S averages are useful. They keep you from having to keep up with twos and square roots of twos.